percent file, uh, which according to the Victory in the Pacific oh, sheet, uh, where are we? Uh, turn five, which is in the combined game, which is turn three. So we're going roughly May 1942 to September. Oh, sorry, hold it up, Anne. May to September 1942. Let's put that back. Where did I get that from? Uh, let's see, turn three, so I must be turn four, probably. All right, edit that bit out, Ian. Okay, so some interesting situation. The Japanese are. 13 points ahead. Uh, we want to keep going. That's nowhere near enough because the Americans are going to be coming, storming home towards the end uh, with massive fleets. Uh, we've got four carriers up the top here. Four of the big fleet carriers all damaged with various degrees of damage. We have got the Hyo, although it is very slow with a speed of three. And we've got lots of the, well, the Junio, but the rest are all very, uh, not fleet carriers, I'd say. Zuiho, Shoho, Ryujo, and Ho Hosho. Forgive my pronunciation, anyone in Japanese. Um, so I've got two with a factor of three air attack, three with a factor of two, and one with a tactor, attack factor of one. Now just to remind you, um, in my game, if a carrier's got any damage on it, it cannot, uh, it cannot fly aircraft. Um, so there's no point sending it out to sail. Now, the Japanese are aware that the Americans have got three big fleet carriers. Uh, but two are damaged, but they do have that one fleet carrier there, Yorktown. Now, over here, the British, it looks like half the bloomin' British fleet is over here in Ceylon. Um, we've got three of the armoured deck carriers, illustrious, formidable and indomitable. Throw in the eagle, then we've got uh, one, two, three, four battleships, including the ants and a battle cruiser renowned, three cruisers, um, and the revenge with one point of damage, uh, all of which are desperately needed actually over <laughs> back in the European theatre. Uh, but anyway, all right, so let's have a think. Uh, oh, just quickly. Uh, yeah, uh, double POC, points of control, this turn for the Mediterranean. Surely, surely the Italians can't have another round of incredible luck with their sailing rolls. A 50-50 chance in the last two turns, the Italians have added nine points of control uh, for the Axis in the European theatre. If it wasn't for them, the Axis would only be two points in front. Uh, incredible. Um, eight, nine ships, they should only sail about three or four and they've been sailing eight. Uh, Germans now back up to three U-boats. Uh, I've gone ahead and made the die rolls for the Russians there. Um, not particularly great, uh, but we, oh, and I've made a mistake anyway, so ignore those die rolls. Uh, that should be a five because I remember cursing, thinking, oh, yeah, the damaged Russian battleship comes out, not the fresh one. Uh, a bit of damage repair to do here. Um, so we're going to be very thin on the ground in the European theatre. On reflection, not sure that I shouldn't have uh, just put this uh, convoy into England for one point of control, but then that only would have reduced the tally to 10. Um, I've sent it off into the Berents. If it survives and lands in Russia, uh, the Allies get three points of control. Um, 
and give, given that the, the axis normally get two points of control, that's a five point turnaround. And we can send a large chunk of fleet over to protect it. Now, the only trouble is, of course, uh, the Barents and uh, the North Sea being German controls means they can come storming out into the North Atlantic and potentially the South Atlantic if they run the risk of uh, getting past the Dover patrols, etc. Right. Um, now, the Italians, having controlled the Mediterranean two turns in a row, could be trying to sneak out into the South Atlantic. Again, they would have to run past the defences of Gibraltar, but given that the Mediterranean is worth double POC again, uh, turn five, so it's worth six points, I don't think the Italians will be bothering with that. They'll be going hell-bent for another six points of control in the Mediterranean Sea. All right, so overall, uh, very interesting. Uh, plus, of course, the <laughs> just to rub it in in the Atlantic theatre, the U-boats are still getting points of control on a five or a six. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, uh, let's have a think about what the Japanese are going to do. The Japanese get six repair points per turn at the Yokosuka Navy Yard. Uh, so we are going to repair, we're going to take three points of damage off the Akagi. We will take two points of damage off the Kaga. And we will take one point of damage. So the three will become a two on the Shikaku. So these two ships effectively will be reinforcements next turn. Okay, so Japanese are a little bit conservative. If they hold on to everything they've got, they'll still gain another six points. So once again, uh, we've put the Kitakami and the Oi single patrollers in those two areas. Central problem, uh, we've got the Quincy and the Vincennes here. Now they can't actually patrol in the Japanese islands because remember, before the Americans can do that, they've got to take Saipan and Okinawa. But what they can do, with just the one uh, cruiser there, if there's nothing else there, they could come a raiding, sink the Kinkasa and get uh, stop Japan from getting the points of control. Uh, but I've got Yamato and Hayo there. Now I'm hoping, I might even put a land base there there, so I'm hoping that will dissuade the Americans from that course of action. But um, knowing the boys I used to play too, that's exactly the sort of thing they'd get up to. Um, now, moving down the actual perimeter, so Central Pacific, Marshall Islands and South Pacific, as you can see, I've got a battle cruiser and two uh, heavy cruisers patrolling. Up in the Central Pacific, I only had the uh, two uh, heavy cruisers, so I've tried to move the Hayuga and it it uh, successfully passed its speed roll. It's got a speed of four, it threw a three, so it's made it. I've just kept the Haruna, the other Japanese battle cruiser, handy just to escort, um, just in case, because uh, I've got eight heavy cruisers. Now I've got all five of the, let's call them lighter carriers there along with the heavies, the Nagato and the Mutsu. Uh, yeah. Because um, I want to be able to respond to any British incursion into Indonesia. As you can see there in Indonesia, we're not mucking around. We've put four heavy cruisers and four battleships on patrol. Okay, let's see what the Allies do. Okay, repair-wise for the Allies, we've got six points at Pearl Harbour. So we'll reduce or we'll get rid of two damage off each of Enterprise and Hornet. And we'll reduce the Maryland from five down to a three. 
and then over Bay of Bengal. We'll get rid of that one damage off the Revenge. However, in Europe, we can't afford to be repairing too much. We've got to sail with what we've got as the British. Uh, so the Ramillies is just going to have to chance it and roll sail with two points of damage. Over in actual England, uh, yeah, really hard choices here. The Nelson's already got five damage, so that's going to have to be repaired. We can't do anything about that. Uh, extremely reluctant to send out the Duke of York but three with three point damage but I think at this stage we don't have a choice okay let's see what the Allies do patroller wise okay so the Americans put Quincy on patrol up in the Aleutian Islands as much as a both a bait but to draw the Japanese away uh, and if the Japanese don't take the bait, the Quincy will pick up a point of control. Uh, two cruisers here in the North Pacific. Uh, three big battleships uh, in the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, now I've got two 453 and two 553 battleships as well, as well as a stack of uh, heavy cruisers with the Yorktown and we've also got for the first time two marine units we're going to have to be a bit careful there but we are up to six land-based air uh, and then as per previous turns three cruisers in both the coral and the US mandate now here in the Bay of Bengal uh, just to keep the Japanese on their toes we've sent uh, the Hermes and the Indomitable out on patrol with three of the older uh, battleships. But to keep the Japanese on their toes, we've got the three heavy cruisers, two aircraft carriers, the fast battleship, uh, Anson and the Renown. Um, just so the Japanese don't get too cocky and don't think they have to put some air component here in Indonesia which hopefully should take some of the stress off the Americans over on the other side, which is sort of the whole point of the exercise of sending British ships to the Pacific. Uh, up here in the Baltic, you can see the dice rolls. As I say, it's a tough turn, got no choice. Out comes the damaged Octoberst Revolution and out comes the Kirov. The other two ships, unfortunately, will remain in port at Leningrad. Okay, so down in the Med, I've sent the Hood and a heavy cruiser to join um, the fleet there. So we've got three lots of air power, three battleships and two cruisers. And we're praying that surely, surely the Italians can't be so lucky again. Uh, as much to stop any u-boats i've got two carriers and the two damaged ships the duke of york and the york in the south atlantic o ocean i'm hoping that the uh, sailing past uh, the channel might put the germans off attacking there um, into the north sea gone pretty big uh, now i have got three land-based air this turn uh, to support this little foray. Uh, actually, in War at Sea 2, you can actually place the uh, land-based air anywhere around England. So uh, you're going to see them used for anti-submarine warfare later in the game. Uh, over in the North Atlantic, you have Rodney repaired, as anticipated. Again, two carriers, Valiant and Barham, which were the two uh, ships that were repaired at the US. Um, now in, I've got the Texas and the Augusta and Torch Convoy. Now Torch Convoy has to get all the way down to the Mediterranean. Uh, so that's escorting that. And then a little controversially, 
Uh, we've got Tuscaloosa and Wichita patrolling. Convoy 2B has moved into the Barents Sea. And the Washington, Arkansas, New York and Ranger are going to be trying to make speed rolls to join um, the other US forces in the Barents Sea. And remember, if they fail, if they don't go back to base, they get inverted and become raiders. So they don't count for control, but they will at least be able to uh, protect Convoy 2B. Now in the standard War at Sea game, uh, the uh, or even War at Sea 2, the Americans are limited to sailing into the North Atlantic, South, South Atlantic, and if you're playing War at Sea 2, uh, the Caribbean, or Caribbean, depending on how you pronounce it, uh, I've always thought that was a load of bollocks. If um, the Italians can go merrily sailing out past G to Gibraltar into the South Atlantic, uh, then there's absolutely no reason uh, why the Americans can't go anywhere on the board as they historically did. They were in the Mediterranean. I know for a fact the Washington, it was a distant uh, escort, but it was covering some of the PQ convoys. Okay, let's see what happens with the Germans and Italians. Unbelievable. You can see the dice rolls there. Of seven Italian ships, six have sailed. The Italians have already, as I've said, added nine points. Uh, these these guys might win the anyway, war Anyway, the Afrika Corps is also sailing out. Uh, the Italian frogmen... They've come out, they've attacked uh, the British fleet. Now, <laughs> sure, they got a hit. What wouldn't they get it? They attacked with a bonus. Uh, they got a hit on the Malaya. Unfortunately, they only threw one point of damage. So the Malaya is continuing on and the Frogman unit is now finished from the game. Uh, now in the North Sea, I forgot to mention the RWF and Bomber Command or go join the British fleet in the North Sea. And uh, the 8th Air Force is going to go into the North Atlantic, uh, again, just to uh, wear off any wary Germans. Now, up here, we can see uh, the die rolls for the um, Americans. Washington is a patroller. New York is a patroller. And Ranger is a patroller. Arkansas, anyway, it's made it, but as a... Uh, fuck's sake, it's made it as a raider. Germans are going to play a bit conservatively this turn. Switch on the light. The sun's clouds just gone behind the sun. Uh, the sun's just gone behind the cloud. Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to put the three U boats, mass them together. We're going to be going for points of control again. Uh, down here in the South Atlantic. They've only got, it's the least anti-submarine warfare, eight points. So we're going to go for that. We decided, given the 11 points in front, and who knows how the Mediterranean may still turn out, we're going to repair the Bismarck and we'll just send the German fleet out to hopefully massacre them. <laughs> Poor old Russians. And we're up in the Berents. We're going to try and use the air power to um, get that convoy. Uh, in terms of anti-submarine warfare, you'd be looking at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 points there. We've only got 8 down here in the South Atlantic. So uh, that's what's happening there. Okay, over in the Pacific, Japanese put two land-based air in Indonesia with four points of control, so we need to be careful with that. Uh, one each in South Pacific and Marshall Islands and two over in the Central Pacific just to dissuade any uh, American advance there. Had considered putting one in the Japanese Islands as a backup to the cruiser there, but as the Americans have put their patrollers out, they've got nothing that can actually reach it. 
um, from Hawaii, the furthest they could get would be the Aleutians. They haven't got the movement to get to the Japanese island, so we're safe doing that. Uh, the Americans similarly, somewhat conservatively, they've actually put that jam uh, damaged um, uh, land-based air up there in the Aleutians, uh, just on the odd chance it might, uh, if the Japanese come over, to try and get an easy kill on that um, cruiser there. And we've got uh, two uh, land-based air in the... Uh, Hawaiian Islands, one in the US Mandate, and then at the uh, Coral Sea. Uh, what could be more appropriate than the RAAF and the RZAF? What could do uh, on to Raiders? So the Japanese have sent the Hosho. The Hosho, the Nachi and the Takeo into the South Pacific just to deter any raiding. Uh, it's worth two points to the Japanese. The Marshall Islands is only worth one and we're going to depend on the land-based air. We've got the Mutsu there, which we've thrown in. Taking a bit of a gamble up here. Uh, we've sent, as you can see, uh, Junio and Ryujo, uh, values of three and two carriers, a stack there of um, heavy heavy cruisers and the Haruna to attack the two uh, American cruisers in the North Pacific Ocean. We'll either draw the Americans that way or uh, we will pick up some points and possibly sink a couple of uh, cruisers uh, over here. Uh, we've got the, um, we've reinforced the, in Indonesia, we've reinforced with a couple of carriers there just to support the two land-based air and uh, put the uh, British uh, off raiding into Indonesia. Last, but by no means least, we've sent the Yamato and Hayu uh, into the um, Central Pacific, just in case the Americans were going to try some sort of end run. Um, although highly doubtful because uh, we'd already moved the Marines Yokosuka back from turn one. Uh, going to reinforce Midway and the Cure Marines, we're heading them down towards truck uh, so that hopefully eventually we can try and take Guadalcanal. Well, the Americans, after much umming and ahhing, have decided to risk their one operational big fleet carrier, the Yorktown, up here against Junio and Rahuho, Rahuho. Uh, with lots of raiding surface ships, including the four big battleships, which means that for a surface uh, combat, the Japanese would be massively outgunned. So we're going to take a bit of a punt, the Americans. Uh, they'll get a... No one's got any land-based air. The Americans will get plus one for control. Presum presumably the Japanese will want an air action. They'll get plus one for that. So... Uh, that could be interesting, but actually apart from that uh, There's no no other actual combat everyone's after the bruising losses of uh, Last turn everyone's gone on very conservative now the British uh, little point risking uh, fleet carriers etc against all that in the um, Indonesia at this stage where the British, of course, would dearly love to be able to send them. He's right here. But anyway, not to be. All right, I think that's all the movement. So just a quick... So we've got some attempted air action up here in the Barents. 
we've got some uh, surface action in the Baltic Sea, U-boat combat in the South Atlantic, uh, what could be an absolute game killer down here in the Mediterranean Sea, if the, if the Italians win that again, pretty much it could be almost a case of good night. Uh, and as I say, over here in the Pacific, the actual only only battle is going to be here in the uh, North Pacific. Okay, back shortly.